<laughs> come on in, come on in. It's the weekend, it's the weekend, it's the weekend. It's Friday, y'all. It's Friday. It's the weekend. Sure. I know a lot of y'all got some paychecks today. <laughs> sure. Going about to do some shopping, some more shopping for the holidays, and hopefully enjoy this weekend. Shoot, it's so cold here in Omaha. I'm thankful for the re weekend, but I don't know how much getting out I'll be doing this weekend. I might be just staying up in the house drinking some hot cocoa and making some chili <laughs> for the weekend. But anyway, you guys, come on in. Make sure you like the video. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. And please make sure you share this channel on your social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you know. <coughs> But um, this review today, this evening, I should say, is going to be over Love & Hip Hop, um, New York. It's the premiere. It just came on the other day. So if you missed it, um, feel free to join the live and stay for the live review if you want. But it will be spoilers. <laughs> but no, it was, it was a pretty good episode. I was actually kind of like... I don't know, impress. Like it, it the first episode kind of makes me get the feeling like the entire season is going to be like really really good. So, you know, the first night was definitely um worth watching. But um and then again, it seems like the epi the last episode and the reunion of season 8, it seemed like it's been forever since that went off. I'm like, dang, was it this year? Was it last year? I can't even remember when season 8 ended. But anywho, <laughs> the name of the episode was called Love and Hip Hop New York Premiere Re Season 1. I'm sorry, Season 9, Episode 1. And it was called Arrested Development. So we're going to jump right in here. Um... At the beginning of the episode, they started off with Sin and Joe. Now, it's right off the bat, <laughs> right off the bat. You can tell, like, the age difference, you know, between the two is pretty obvious. And evidently, they've been knowing each other for a few years as friends. At least that's what Joe says. <laughs> that's what he wants us to believe. That they started off as friends for a couple of years. And then later on decided to take it there. And they took it there all right. Um, and then produced a beautiful baby. Um, but Sin, you know, she's happy. She's excited about the baby, about being a new parent. You know, overjoyed. You know, over they bundle of joy. But not so thrilled about their love life. Um, now, I don't know if... This lack of sexual activities um, between them two has more to do with, like, the new baby. Um, you know, sleepless nights, the pamper changings, the bottle feedings. You know, a new baby can be a lot, you know, for anybody. But it's clear to see that she's been in some heat <laughs> for a minute. She over there just hot, just hot like fire. Um, This girl is ready, set, go at any given moment. But Joe is up there tripping. He's like, um, you know, they just had a new baby and she's a lot more younger and much more vibrant, you know, than he is as well. So it kind of looks to me like, you know, her acting like a nymphomaniac right now is really kind of turning him off instead of turning him on. <laughs> but um, then, so instead of joining her, you know, for a spin around the pool, because she was like, you know what, come on, you know, jump in the pool, you know, I want to, you know, have some fun and everything. He brings the baby out. And he's like, um, oh, me and baby, <laughs> me and my mini me, we about to head out. And she was like, what? Where are you going? Anyway, he had other plans. He wasn't trying to take no spin around that pool. So he took the baby and hooked up with Safari and Rich Dollars. Now, um, Richie, <laughs> Richie and him. Of course. I mean, I had a feeling as soon as they hooked up that the first thing they would discuss is Safari, A1, and Lyrica. And they did. <laughs> they was like, so you telling us 
that all season long on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, it was a total fabricated relationship between him and Lyrica. He was like, yep, yep, it sure was. And now I'm ready to settle down. <laughs> I'm like, really? Like, how convenient. Now that the season is old, over and you almost destroyed your friend's relationship, now he ready to settle down. <laughs> he ready to settle down and find him a wifey. But I, I just can't. I just can't. I cannot take Safari seriously ever. And then he claims, you know, he's still claiming that him and Lyrica, they never kiss. They never had sex. They never cuddle. Nada. He claims nothing ever happens. So his answer is the same answer, you know, he gave on the reunion last week. It just took him again all season long to answer that question. <laughs> but um, I don't know. I still have my doubts. I still have my doubts out. I, I don't know. I I just don't believe that totally nothing happened. I again I ain't saying they had sex. I didn't mention that a few times. But I ain't saying they had sex, but something went on. Something happened. But anyway, um, then we move on to Kim Bella and her situation with her man Jules Santana. Um, I had almost I had almost like actually forgot about that incident with Jules. You know, when he was arrested for carrying a gun around, you know, in his luggage at the airport. But what I didn't know was that he left all his ID and everything behind. He just took off after out of the airport. Like you left your ID, your ID. So running was like pointless. <laughs> he might as well have stayed there and was like, <laughs> arrest me. <laughs> And then, you know what? I don't know this man from a can of paint. I really don't. But he had to be on some serious, like a serious high to bring that gun to the airport. He was popping pills, drinking that scissor up, you know, that lean, that little Wayne and them be drinking for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Y'all know that lean. But um, he was up there high off of that and the pills and everything. And... I don't know when people are going to learn. That stuff will kill you. Like, that stuff will really kill you dead. But, you know. Mm. Anywho. Um, but, you know, since he claims he was high and all that, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he was really, really high out of his mind. Because other than that, you know, otherwise I have to assume that he wanted to be treated like a terrorist and possibly get gunned down in the middle of the airport. So that 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 can't be it. So he had to be high. He was like, I found out with the rest of the world, you know, at the same time. <laughs> he found out at the same time with the rest of the world that he had a gun in his suitcase. <laughs> you found out with the rest of the world. <laughs> okay, okay. But um and then do y'all remember when Safari okay. I mm, I remember this clearly. When Safari was getting dragged all across social media, you know, regarding that performance when he got booed off the stage. But am I missing something here when it comes to Safari? Um and his music career. Like, is he or is he not serious? about his music music career like safari he must have okay when he got out the truck with his fellas his boys you know his dogs they was walking up to the dykeman basketball court you know where the tournament was um in nyc and they had said that's where some of the biggest artists the biggest entertainers perform and i'm like and he performing like i don't know i think i may have heard excuse me bless me i think i may have heard like one song maybe one and a half from Safari over, I don't know how many years. I don't know. Maybe I've been asleep under a rock. But anywho, um, he was giving like all this swag and vibrations. Like he just knew he was going to tear it up. He was going to kill it. And he got booed off the stage. Um, Again, how long has he been playing around with this music? And then got booed off the stage on his own stomping grounds. Now, that's sad. That's real sad. The only thing that was missing was the Sandman from the Apollo to sweep his butt on off the stage. <laughs> I'm going to need Safari. Boo, boo. I'm going to need you to stick to your day job. Just stick to your day job. Just keep hopping from one hip-hop 
hip hop show to the next. Hit just shoot Atlanta, Hollywood, New York. Just stick to your day job. Just stick to your day job. <laughs> but then, um, Jules and, and Kim Bella, you know, they had went to see a counselor because their relationship, you know, definitely has been through a lot. Um, they've been together for like nine years. And I think she's really um, concerned that he might relapse. He was addicted to pills, um, lean. Um, you might as well... Try to throw alcohol in there, weed and whatever else. Um, and granted, he got sobered up, you know, when he went to jail for 30 days. But that was only 30 days. I mean, 30 days? When you really addicted to some drugs, 30 days? Most people ain't just going to be recovered in 30 days. So I hope he's also, you know, seeking some help from, you know, some AA you know, with AA meetings or, you know, something like that, because she most definitely does not want to see him go back down that road again, especially with them having those little kids. But even still, she claims, you know, she'll be there for him no matter what, through thick and thin. I mean, it, it's already been nine years, nine long years. And a lot of women can't, you know, they, they ain't built to withstand all that. I mean, in nine years, like, a lot of infidelity, a lot of cheating, disrespect, you know, drug abuse, in and out of jail, that's a lot for any woman to, you know, to go through and still a lot, you know, for them to still want to go through. But, you know, and then with the sentencing and, you know, with him and the gun incident and all that, he's now facing, you know, possibly five to ten years unless he pleads out. And I think he said if he pleads, it'll be like 18 to 24 months. But that's that's a hard decision to make because, I mean, in his situation, he claims, he claims he honestly did not know he had that gun in his suitcase. He claims he honestly did not know. So, of course, he wants to plead innocent. You know, he wants to go to trial but then you never know how it's going to go on trial. You never know. So that 5 to 10 could be 9.5 when he could have took a plea deal. And so I don't know. I think Kim Bella, the way she was looking and acting, you know, I think, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say, oh, baby, just take the plea. Just take the plea. Just say you did it. You know, just take the plea and get 18 to 24, you know. But, you know, then looking at them kids, it's like 5 to 10. Them kids will be grown by then. So, you know, that's a lot for him to think about. And y'all dudes out there that's watching, shoot, y'all better watch what y'all be doing in them streets. Because um, <laughs> it ain't real till it gets real. It ain't real till it gets real. But, anywho, um, what do y'all think about Alexis Sky and Fetty Wap? Like, she got signed to Trey, Trey Way Records, which is the same company, you know, her baby daddy, you know, Fetty Wap is signed to. But why out of all the record companies out there did she sign with that one? Now, the CEO, Shasti, I think that's how you say his name, he knew offhand, you know, the situation between them two, between her and Fetty. Um, Alexis was basically claiming that allegedly Fatty is a deadbeat daddy who is not involved in his child's life at all, at all. And it almost sounded like she wanted to break down and cry when her and Fatty started discussing how he doesn't do for their child like he does for his other children. And Alexis and the baby, like, literally almost died. When she started to go in detail, like, how she came early, and they showed the little pictures of the tiny little baby, and she had to have four surgeries. The baby had to have four brain surgeries, and dude was just M-I-A, allegedly. Allegedly. That is so heartbreaking. That is so heartbreaking. I can't imagine going through all of that and my child's father is just out there somewhere doing his own thing and forgot about he had a baby, you know? I don't know. But anyway, then Shasti asked her, you know, are you able to keep your personal relationship away from the office? She claims she doesn't know if she can keep her composure 
And she, when Fetty walked up in that office, she couldn't hide her anger, her disappointment. It was like written all over her face. And Shasti was just sitting there in the cut watching. Like, I'm thinking, is this a setup? This has to be a setup. Shasti must have purposely set this up. Now, Fetty came in there talking about, um, congratulations. You know, I just wanted to come in here and congratulate you on getting signed and signing your contract and all that woo de woo And I'm like, <laughs> allegedly, you haven't been supporting your daughter who almost died at birth, who had four brain surgeries, and you've been MIA not help supporting that child at all, allegedly. And then you show up to tell your baby mama congrats on your on your new contract with the company. I'm like, this had to be a setup. I, I really do think it was a setup from Shasti to see how they interact because Shasti is really not wanting that BS, you know, at the office, all that, you know, friction between them two he's like you know y'all need to keep that out of the office because i don't want all that you know up in here whatever y'all got going on y'all need to keep that out there in them streets but again it was just like so awkward for her but and that that brings me back to out of all the companies you can sign with you chose to sign with them but Mm, mm. Fetty claimed, you know, in that scene, Fetty claimed he'll do better. He claimed he'll do, he'll come around. So I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. But after all that, I was like, dang, that's when I was like, this season is about to be off the chain. <laughs> I mean, because not even halfway through the first episode, the storylines, like most of the storylines were just so intense and so real. But, um, Next, we hear Mayno. You know, he was giving us the tea on his 10-year sentence and how he met his girlfriend, Maggie. And, hey, Miss Hall, how you doing? You did? Oh, yeah. I'm glad. you Did you like it? Did you like it? <laughs> I thought that movie was fantastic. I really did. I really did. And I cannot wait to do the review on that tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to be sitting up here tonight taking all my little notes and stuff so we can go over it tomorrow. But um, I think I'm going to come around whew, probably, I don't know, I think maybe about 9, 9 p.m., because in the morning, I'm going to go live again just to remind people, you know, of the review. Give people a chance to go see the movie, maybe in the afternoon or something. So, yeah. But I'm glad you liked it. I'm glad you liked it. I told y'all y'all would like it. But, yes, we will do that review tomorrow. It's going to be Sisters from Another Mister movie reviews. <laughs> Featuring me and my homegirl, my sister girl. <laughs> but, um... As far as this Mano dude, you know, he was explaining how uh, his girlfriend had got shot. It was at one of his performances. Like, he had just got out of jail, out of prison for 10 years, met some girl. She comes to his performance for the first time, and she gets shot in the leg. And now, of course, because of that, she's struggling with going out the house. She don't like being in large crowds. And who can blame her? Because, you know, along these days, you know, along with concerts, it's a lot of, you know, public shootings going on lately. So I wouldn't blame her. He's like, you know, she don't never want to come out the house. I'm surprised she even still hanging around with him because uh, I wouldn't blame her if she was to even take off running for the hills. Because he, I mean, just from his criminal background and being in and out of jail and then getting shot, you got shot at your man's. And he talking about, man, that bullet was probably meant for me and not her. I'm surprised she's still hanging in there. <laughs> but, you know, on another flip side, uh, Mano, I think he might be exactly what Safari needs. I mean, I think that's why some people don't like me. I can't take Safari seriously. I didn't hear other people say it, too. But, um... I think that's why people don't take Safari seriously. Like when Mano was, you know, explaining Safari's music, he's like, everybody always trying to get on the mic and try to spit them gangster bars. 
But you ain't no gangster. You spitting all them gangster lyrics and you a wangster. You ain't no gangster. <laughs> like 50 Cent said, you ain't no gangster. You a wangster. And he be up there spit, just spitting. You know what he going to do? I'm going to put a bullet in. So, so, come on now. <laughs> Safari, everybody knows Safari ain't like that. <laughs> he ain't even built like that but he keep on making that type of music and i think that's probably why he also got booed off the stage you know when he was on his own stumping grounds at that uh basketball tournament but um i think Mano, you know he was trying to tell him you know that he's going to try to talk to him and try to probably give him some advice on which direction, you know, figure out which direction Safari wants to go or which direction he should go um, as far as his music and probably, you know, just in general, you know, with his life in general. But because um, I'm telling you, last the last season on Love and Hip Hop Hollywood, Safari just made an ass of himself. I think he just made a big old ass of himself all last season. I'm like, his storyline was bunk. It was fake. I mean, granted, I still think something went on with Lyrica, but the way he dragged it out all season long, um, like they were really, really involved in a relationship. And then at the end, nothing happened. It just got blown out of proportion. I didn't do anything. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so hopefully Maino will be able to, you know, get him in order, you know, piece him together. But then um, back to Joe. I'm going to need him to eventually give Alexis that package. Um, Safari is not about that life, Ms. Hall. Safari is not about that life. Yes, Liam Neeson, girl, tell me he wasn't playing that role. <laughs> I'm telling you, I wanted to go see that movie again the very next day. I'm serious. I'm serious. So, again, I'm glad you liked it. But, yeah, Safari, he ain't about that life. And he up there spitting them bars like he the hardest... Uh, the hardest G up in uh New York. <laughs> no, he ain't. He good at sending out them um uh, videos though. The videos with that anaconda wrapped around his neck, his uh leg. He good at that. <laughs> I gotta give it to him. But um, <laughs> uh, Joe Button, he's up here like his girl Alexis. Um, she done popped up at his live podcast, grabbed the mic, asked him. Is she the best thing he's ever had? And he confirmed his love for her, you know, on air, live, on his podcast. But on the way home, when she told him, you know what, babe, babe, I got a sitter. Babe, I got us a hotel. We don't even have to go all the way home. We can just pull up on the telly, you know, go in there, you know, handle our business, you know, try to rekindle that flame and everything and whatnot. He was like, for what? <laughs> what you get a hotel for? Um, I, I ain't going to no hotel. I'm going home. I was like, oh my God. Like, what is it? Why? I, you know what? Oh, she got off that truck. She was so pissed. She got off that whip and she just started walking off in them stilettos. But I get it. I mean, I, I really do get it. After a man passes up sex from his own woman, not from just some random chick, but when a man passes up sex over and over again, so many times for his from his own woman, she's going to start feeling like she's either unloved, she isn't desired anymore, or she no longer, you know, is appealing to him. And she just had a baby, like they have a little baby. And right after you have the baby, that's when you're like, that's that's the the biggest time when you start having doubts you know your belly you know you're trying to get your snap back you you know you you going through all these emotions and your breasts hurt and, you know you're just going through all this stuff and for your man to not show you any attention after you done went through nine months <laughs> carrying that child of his and now he don't want to give you no sex <sighs> She jumped out that whip and she was like, deuces. <laughs> deuces. <laughs> but anyway, Joe, you need to get that. You need to get you need to handle that for somebody else. Somebody else will handle it for you. But um, anywho, uh, when Jules and Kim Bella, when they was at the park with the kids, 
I really hated to watch that scene. It was like really sad. Um, again, y'all men still deep in them streets need to pay attention because it ain't real till it's really real. Leaving your family for some dumb stuff, stealing precious time away from your child, precious time that they should be spending with you, you stealing that away and handing it over to the man with the key to the chains. I mean, at my age, it's only one reason you'll ever find me in trouble with the law. And that's if I'm either defending myself and it's self-defense or I'm protecting my children from somebody. Other than that, <laughs> I ain't trying to do anything that can get me locked up and lose precious, valuable time that I could be spending out here, you know, in the free world. But, um, anywho, but if I did, <laughs> if I did catch a case, I know that there is somebody out there who will find me a good old lawyer, just like they did OJ. <laughs> Because I'm going to need a good one. Because <laughs> mama want to come home. And then make sure y'all keep some money on my books so I can keep on getting me some snacks. <laughs> I don't want to become somebody's, uh, <laughs> you know what. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> y'all, y'all let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I thought it was really good. I mean, compared to how Love & Hip Hop Hollywood started off. I think this is going to be a way better season than Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. And I can't wait to the next episode where we was, um, they were showing, uh, what's her name? And her adopted daughter, uh, da, 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 what's her name? Ooh, Jesus. I can't remember her name. It's on the tip of my tongue. Mm, Yandy. 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 I guess she had a, a, either became a foster parent and she has this daughter, and she was talking to the daughter and telling her she didn't want, you know, she got to protect her and her sons. And so I don't know if the foster daughter had did something that could possibly endanger Yandy's other children. So I don't know. I got, I can't wait to see that. But um, y'all let me know again what y'all thought about the episode. Make sure y'all hit that like button. Uh, make sure you share the review on your social media sites and make sure if you're just scrolling through and checking out my channel please subscribe to my channel please and thank you very kindly and you guys don't forget miss hogden went and saw the movie widows now she didn't went and saw it i told y'all it's pretty good and she vouched for me so um if y'all love some viola davis and some liam neeson especially them two it's worth going to see. I'm going to do a review tomorrow evening with my sister, um, Samantha. We call her Sam. Y'all probably already saw us do a review last month on um, the new Halloween movie. Um, we do reviews once a month, uh, movie reviews. And it's called Sisters from Another Mister Movie Reviews. And we do it once a month. We just randomly pick a movie, you know, she might pick, I might pick any movie, no genre. It could be comedy, a love story. Um, like Halloween was like, you know, a horror story. Uh, this movie, uh, widows that was like, Ooh, it was, it was good. It was really good. So I can't wait to do the review on that. So you guys, you have tonight to watch the movie was well, kind of late. It's like 10 o'clock. So I don't know some of the movies, uh, locations are still open if you plan on going check out a movie you might want to check that one out or check it out tomorrow during the daytime or during the afternoon because again i'll be doing a review on that tomorrow night so y'all know how we do <laughs> in the meantime and in between y'all stay safe be blessed and I'm out. And I'll see you tomorrow, Miss Hawk. <laughs>